Okay, folks, uh, we're going to go ahead and jump in. I've got the recording going, so for those of you all who have to go, uh, we'll record the training here. What we're going to do over the next few minutes is just simply go through the ABCs, the one, two, threes of training the J-hook. Uh, hopefully, Dodge Trader John will be on the line. We'll get him to participate, so I'm waiting to hear from him. He was here a moment ago, but uh, we, uh, we'll see if we can't get him back on the line. So I'm going to go ahead and get started, and as I do, if y'all will uh, do me a favor, you can ask questions along the way, but I'm going to pretty well try to stay along with the presentation here. Now, many of you have already seen this. There's nothing really new here. If we need to go over and take a look at a chart live in the market, we will do that. But I think it's imperative that you get the basics down. Um, one of my coaches always, w at the start of every season, was like, back to the basics. This is a ball. <laughs> this is what we do. So... Anyway, as we go through this, I want to just be very clear that uh, the trading the forex market is very risky. You need to consider your investment objectives, um, your level of experience, risk appetite. Also, no representations being made that any software or training will guarantee profits or not result in losses from trading. Hey, John, as we get started here, um, can you jump on the line? Let's test your mic if you hear me. Can you, hear can me? you do that? Oh, I okay. Speak a little hold bit on. loud. Okay, hold on, Chuck. Hang up there. I'll be back. How about now, Dean? Is that better? Yeah. Uh, let me reduce your mic just a little bit. You got a little. You got a little bit closer. How about that? Not so close to your. Is that better? That's too far away. Okay. Hold too on. far away. Halfway. Halfway. One, two, three. There you go. One, two, three. One, two, three. Let me turn it. You ask. You ask. Hello? Dean, can you hear me? Dean? Okay, does that sound good, John, now, everybody? I think we got it, John. How about now, guys? John? Hey. Okay, yeah, John, can you hear me now? I can. Can you hear me? Okay, okay yes. Now, there's about, just, just to let you know, there's about a three to five second delay. So, when you say... Can you hear me now? Give it about three or five seconds at least, or ten seconds for people to respond. So, <laughs> but you do sound good at this point. Hey, I look good. Okay, so what? Uh, that was a joke. You know, <laughs> you might be good. I've got a face for radio, so uh, I, I'm good. <laughs> All right. So talking about the the J hook, I've really condensed down to meat and potatoes what we have here. And basically, in the J hook, what we're looking for is that type of appearance. And there's a certain structure that Dodge Trader John has shared with me on how he's able to capture that. And some of you have caught on pretty quickly with this. Whether you're going long or you're going short, the J-hook is there repeatedly. John, one of the questions that we've had, and I'm going to interject questions along the way, one of the questions that we have is, can I see a J-hook on a one-hour chart or a one-minute chart, or a four-hour chart, or is it just only on the 15-minute chart? Dean and everyone, the J-hook pattern actually shows up on all time frames. Okay, good. Thank you. And what are the best times to trade the J-hook? Yes, sir. And I'm just going to kind of uh, review what I did the other day quickly. And Dean talks about the best times to trade or on this slide right here. You guys, when you come into Asia, you know, we're looking for those initial one or two moves. And the same thing in the Euro session and same thing in the U.S. session. As we get farther away from the open session line, the harder it is, obviously, to the, the bigger your risk reward or is becomes. Because as you're farther away, then you have more room for retracement. We're just trying to use the dots levels to our advantage to pick a spot on the charts in a, in a particular time in the market to minimize our risk and maximize our reward. And you can see in Asia session, and over the last week, it, it can be a little difficult because, you know, basically what happens is Dean's dots levels become support and resistance. You know, whether you're oscillating between the sell stop and the buy stop or actually the sell and the buy. You know, we've talked about sometimes – Here's all you can do as a trader, because you know you can come into the market and try to pick the best times when the market's going to move. 
And for instance, I was talking with my buddy last night or this morning, Chuck, and he was like, "Man, that dot that you know this J hook ate me up last night." And my question to him was, "Well, why were you trading in a period where you're not really going to get the follow through that you're looking for?" And now realize this J hook, we're trying to get a, a it's a continuation pattern. So we're looking to go long above the open, short below the open. And <clears throat> you can see how different setups actually, and here you can see again, look at how it took us almost an hour, to, and Dean's charts you can see how it took us an hour, an hour and a half into the session before we really made a move in one direction. Prior to that, we also, hey, we went up to the buy, we came back down. We went up, we came back down. And we tested that buy level hey, too. Hey, John. Go ahead, Dean. Okay, uh, I just want to help everyone. Um, if you go up above the the the, the slide, you'll see some a toolbar. And a toolbar, you have like a pencil with a mark through it. You see that? Not yet, but I see a couple arrows. Oh, I do what? see it. Yes, I see it. Okay. I just okay. Click it. on that, and then, then click on the red dot. That's your laser pointer. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now this, you can see this range here and this range here are basically bracketing the market as we come into the, uh, this session. Me and Dean have talked and I kind of pointed out to him before, when you can count these hash marks coming over here, usually somewhere between five and seven hash marks, the market likes to make a move. Um, so as we're trading, say we're trading this period point area in here and we're looking to buy the sell stop level. We have talked about it that you, you can keep your stop below the open. My recommendation is when you're early in the markets that you've taken pips off when you're seeing any rejection at the buy and sell levels early in the session. Because the last thing you want to do is take a six, seven, eight pip that you're up and now you're down. So we, the caveat is early in the session, and sometimes it'll break right away, but you never know. And if you really kind of bank a little bit, take some profits, you can almost draw the range in here that we're oscillating between those periods. And that kind of chop, and especially last night and before non-farm payroll, is you get this oscillation where you're basically trapped in a range. Now realize, and I don't know the statistics, the market likes the range more often than it likes to break out. And it seems like it only really breaks out maybe two to at max three times during a whole 24-hour session. And sometimes it's just once. But and here's my whole philosophy be, be behind trying to trade away from the open. I know that these pairs have ADRs, and I can see it on Dean's charts. And sometime during the day, these pairs are going to try to go either to up to their ADR or they're going to go down to their ADR. And that's what I'm trying to do is maximize my trade by having a minimal amount of risk and catching the basically to Dean's levels. Now, if they go to their ADR, the ADRs are almost always above the BT2 and BT1s. But again, my first initial targets, the buy, the sell, ST1, BT2. And you can see for the last couple of months, we've had quite a, rate, or a consolidation market where you know, it, it can be difficult to trade. But you want to have basic rules. And your basic rule is above the open line, I'm going long. Below the open line, I'm shorting it. And I'm always going to protect the bottom line. And here's part, you know, and you don't want to get it to where, gosh, I just took eight seven pip losers. My, if I can give you some more insight, and this goes again, try to avoid the early session chop. Now, if news is coming up, you want to avoid the, the chop before the news. And a good example of yesterday's news and uh, U.S. news and the news this morning, and we we're kind of talking about this. Wait 15, wait two bars till after the news. Look for a pin and then look for the opposite direction. And you can see here where, you know, this these markets basically chop you, chop you, chop you, chop you, and then wear you out, and then they go. And your job is not to get worn out, not to sit here for 10 or 12 or 15 hours, but to enter the market in, at a point where I know my odds of catching a breakout are better. 
And you can all see the J-hook here and how really, you know, the open line tested you. You can see where the buy stop level, and I'm pointing right in here. But our, and I, I, Dean doesn't have the guppies on here, but I bet you they're, they're all probably pointing up. And the guppies are important because, you guys, everybody knows that if you're in the direction of the major long-term guppies, the odds of you being right go up hey, immensely. Uh, can you do you always uh, have to trade? I'm just trade saying, them? can we? Go ahead. Um, I've got I've I've got a breakdown of all the rules, so why don't we kind of move towards that? Because you're already you're already jumping into that, which is good. But I for those who are not who haven't seen this before and want to take some notes, I want to step forward if I can here and move to that slide that kind of breaks it down. And I don't know if you recall, John, but after this slide, uh, we have each one of these. So each one of these right here is a slide. So you know, like there's the like you were talking about with the with the guppies, and then we okay. you know there are diagonal lines. So um, you can take it from there, John. You see the arrows up above the 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 black left and right arrows. So you can talk about the topic and then go to that slide if yes, you sir. want. You see the black? There you go. Bingo. Pushed one, yeah. Okay, I'll, that, that, uh, I'll give that a try. Diagonal trend Higher line low. on lower highs or lower lows. Um, and this works <laughs> on every time. Yeah, well, thank you, sir. This works on, again on every time frame. It's the same thing. And let me go to the, that slide. So you can draw the line across the bottoms. Is this? And here, just generally speaking, you don't even have to draw a line. Go back to the chart. Here's where the price has started. It's going this way. Okay, so this is the way we're wanting to trade. But as Dean drew the le the line there and a a, you can see that we're looking for a break of that going with the guppies. So we've got our diagonal trend line break. We've got pins below the open. You take the trade. Now, are, could you could this maybe not work? Absolutely. But again, we're risking this this little bit down here, and you can either have your stop right up here underneath the, the, the guppy moving averages, and I would almost recommend that. You see your J-hook here, minimize your risk. Your stop could be here at the open. Your stop could be below this pin. The safest place is that pin right there. But again, what it does is it increases your risk-reward okay? because you're going to have to have a bigger stop. And you can see here, boy, J-hook. J hook, you see how the long term guppies look at here. Fifth, when a pair start moving, we talked about this. The 15 likes to hold. Oftentimes, they'll come down in here to the 35 or 50. And again, we're just trading away from the open, preferably in the direction of the long term guppies. Now, let me see if I can go to the back to the other slide. Okay, so there's the B, and you can see where your entry is going to be. The shift pin candle that we talked about. And those shift pin candles, you they'll they'll almost always, not always always, but almost always indicate the bottom of the J hook. You can see up here, even and this is telling you, and we talk diagonal lines. So the Paris currency is going up this way. You can see as we come down to the bottom angles, we want to be buying. And as if we and I don't even draw these lines anymore. I just simply eyeball it. But if I saw this. I'm exiting my trade up here, and I'm looking for another re-entry. And I've done this actually like three times on the Aussie dollar this morning. Not in the direction of the guppy trade, but the same technique let's in the opposite one, direction. Let's, okay, let's so go let back see. one slide. So is there anybody out there trying to write these down? I just want to make sure you got each one of these steps down as John explains it. So if you'll let me know, is there anyone out there trying to jot these down? Anybody hear me? I would, I would, yeah. <laughs> I do. <laughs> me and you got yeah, a good conversation yeah. going. Okay, I just want to make sure that we not get ahead of ourselves. So, okay, good, you got him, good. So I just want to make sure that everybody's aware. A, now when John goes through these, okay, so uh, just give an example, like we talked about A here. There's the diagonal trend line. That's number one. Number then then B, you know, now I 
look for the long-term guppies because they're higher probability. Um, we did, the, you know, a couple of days ago, Chad and some other folks, along with John, captured some J-hooks that were going against the long-term guppies, which you can do, but just it's a bit of higher risk because it's, it's not a higher probable trade, but you got to be right on it. Uh, as I often say, Jack be nimble, Jack be quick, but in this case, I think it's John be nimble, John be quick. <laughs> so with Dodge Trader John, but uh, uh, the long-term guppies uh, would be the next thing that I personally look for. I'll leave it to you, uh, John. Thanks, Dean. You, guys and gals, this is really um, a system that you can use to not overtrade. As you move away from the open line and you get up into areas like this, your chance of continuation are less. Will it continue? It can, and it maybe it won't. But what we're trying to do is get the best possible setups. We're looking to take our trades in this area here. You can see the bias is certainly up. The pair is trending from bottom left to top right. Conversely, if it was starting up here in the top left corner and coming down this way, our bias would be this way, down towards the bottom, and we would draw our diagonal trend lines the opposite way. Yeah. Now, uh, and here's another advantage. If and you can look at look at the U.S. this morning. Really, even with non-farm payroll. The market and some of these pairs really didn't start generating some speed to about an hour after the equity market opened. And then yesterday it was kind of the same thing again. So often they love to lull you to sleep and just, you know, they they they, they use that little tight range where they kind of put this you know pressure on you and you made it, you know, well, we only got two, you only got three, or you lost one or two, or you lost ten pips, and then you're afraid to take the next one. Try to look at these charts, see your setup, wait for the right time, and that's that. And that that is probably the biggest difficult portion of trading. This is when is the right time. You can you can increase your odds of the right time knowing that in this five to seven bar range, it's down in this area here. You're going to get a movement at the beginning of the session. You can look for these breakout moves, and this the long-term guppies here are telling you to get in this trade and hold on. And you can see, really, you bank some here. And all you can do is if this you think it's a J-hook, you're taking the trade. Your target's up here. Here's your stop. So many times, I, I you know, and as I've been trying to help some of my other friends, that, you know, is this a J-hook starting? Is this a J-hook starting? All you can do, the J-hook up here is not as good as the J-hook at the open price. Why? Because I'm risking just a little bit to get to BT2 or higher. And I'm kind of like rambling a little bit, so let me back up here to the next slide. So I hope I'm going the wrong way. Okay. So the test of the session open. Ideally, the easiest trade to take is the test of the session open, where you break away from it and you come back to it. See if I can get to one. I bet you there's a slide like that. <laughs> that was a 200 day. Uh, let's see. This is kind of. That's a tough, a little tougher chart to trade, but here's what I was kind of talking about earlier, folks. Remember about how we're testing the buy and sell stop levels? Come down here. You think, oh, you really never. This wasn't really a trade because it really never gave you that close or that that momentum. It's early in the session, and if you get a pin going away, you probably shouldn't take that trade. Now, if you bought this and you saw it come up here. The one thing, even if you didn't get a chance, it looks like it's 19 pips between the sell stop and the buy, the buy level. Even if you didn't bank any of your pips, the last thing you want to do is let this trade go negative. All right, and so I'm just giving you, okay, here's, I think I see the setup, but I'm, it could go, but the one thing is I never know what's going to happen. Nobody's, uh, like Dean was talking earlier, nobody's got the crystal ball. So the one thing, if I took the trade, I'm trying to take some, and if this is the Aussie, Aussie session or Asia, I'm banking some, and I know early in the sessions they like to do this where they run it up to a buy or sell level and they reverse it. So you've got to protect your downside. Now look at here again. This market took one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hash marks almost before it picked the direction. What does seven hash marks really correlate with? I would think it probably correlates with these candles probably about an hour to two hours into the market. 
every time? Nope, but you can see here where you the guppies were real braided and here where they opened up and gave you your trade. So even if you got in early, you protect the bottom and you're still looking to your same technique every time. I'm buying here. I'm looking to bank here and higher, but I never know where it's going, so I move my stop as soon as I can and I protect it. Okay. When I see this here, it's the same trade the other way. And that's my point. If you took these trades and they wore you out and you just sat here for two hours, your likelihood of maybe taking this trade are less because you're a little worn out and the market's whipsawed you and got you back on your heels. Anticipate this. Anticipate this so it doesn't mess you up when you get to this area. Okay? Um, and I, I did say the caveat, sometimes they like to just go. But you know, all you can do is take it and then move your stop as quickly as possible. If you don't like that, wait. It's as simple as that. The Aussie session will whip you around the most. The Euro session and Dean's brought it up in the past will give you generate usually your best runs. And, it'll, and if it's going really well, it'll run right into the U.S. session. And sometimes it'll run right through the U.S. session and, never, and then just consolidate at the, very, at the bottom of the top of the range. Okay, Dean, so where am I going next here? Questions on that, you guys? Let me see here. Um, on this chart here, it's the same thing again. You can see where we're basically consolidating between the, this, this level here, this buy level up here. Again, if you take this trade right here and you come, you get positive. Don't let it go negative on you. You know, and again, let's see. Count these hash marks: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So just a little past seven, it picked it. So, and if you got here again, you just have to protect your trade. Don't let these things go. If you get up, folks, and Dean does this beautifully. I mean, he posts his trades, and you can see he's got a lot of these. Oh, I got stopped out plus two, got stopped out plus two. It is more important for you to get stopped out plus two than to get stopped out plus 60 or minus 60. You do not want to get trapped and miss all this. Is that making sense, you guys? Let's see. So critical levels, major support and resistance. Oftentimes, you guys, you'll, you'll see on the charts where you need to, Dean's got it all over his charts, the uh, support and resistance. Um, the dots levels, the, <laughs> the dots, you got, again, I think I kind of just explained how important the dots levels are. Um, let's, let's see, trading the J-hook. Here, here's an example of this session where, again, it just took off. Uh, and, uh, the dots guppy levels are showing you really which way to trade. Even if you took this trade and it came up to this level and you banked all your pips, if we had mentioned this in the past, if you start to see this really is right here a J hook right in this area, you know, and this really is a J hook too right in here. I mean, it's a lot smaller and harder to see on a 15 minute. Even this is really a J hook. It hasn't completed yet. But a J-hook doesn't have to be this huge roll down. It can be a lot of times where you just get a 23% retracement and then bust up. Remember, these are continuation moves. So the shallower the J-hook, the better off a continuation. You see this area in here on the 15, on a pair that's strong for the day? Take the trade. Where's your stop? Right in below here. You're either right or wrong. But you can see you're risking this little bit potentially to get this. Same thing in this area here. Now let's just talk about it right here at the open. You can see right here that we're basically chop, chop, chop. Our guppies are telling us which way. We've got those short terms coming down to the long terms. Pin, you're watching the charts, you're watching the charts. You see price start to build up above these, these guppies like this. You're entering the trade right in this area. Even if you don't get it right here at the sell stop, or sell stop level, take the trade. You broke the trend line, everything's moving up, and your stop again is actually your stops right here at the, if you if you're late coming up to the buy and you miss the sell stop level, then the, the previous level below is probably the best place. You can either do it right here below the long term guppies, you can do it below the 15. 
Sell stop level, right there at the bottom of the pin. Safest place is here. Next safest is here. Next safest is below the guppies. Next safest is right there. I know early in the session it's likely to chop me. I'd be wrong here, but I'm protecting the downside. And when I see this here, and you can see where this, this when, man, we're separating the 15s hold. Whenever the 15 holds, you need to be in that on that side of the trade. For some reason, that 15 when when these when these pairs start to trend on the 15 minute and the 15 MA, it's a it's a trade that you need to be in. Okay, Dean. So I think I got that one pretty well. I'm trying to look at the questions too. Um, let me move forward here. Um, am I actually moving the charts? I don't think I did. Is that the end of it, Dean? Can anybody hear me? Uh-oh. Dean's typing me a message. Are you there? Uh-oh. Hey, John. I'm just sitting back. Did you need something there? Hello, John. I know. Hold on. Yeah. Uh, John, are you there? Is any can anybody hear me? Uh, did you wrap it up? I'm sorry, I had to step away for a moment. I'm, I'm working on the Meditator Four. Yes. Okay. Good. We don't. Okay. I. Oh, you were talking. We don't. We're not hearing you now, John. Do you? Give me a two if you hear John. Just type in two if you hear John. Or you can, you can type in can't hear John. How about John. now, folks? Can you hear me? So, oh. So we're missing John here. All right. Okay. Back in the game. There you are. Uh, Dean, for some reason, you, I couldn't move your charts. And, uh, and that's when I was saying I, everybody could yeah. hear me. Hey, uh, and I pushed a few buttons, and I probably muted myself. So I'm all good now, though. Okay, your I see your charts moving. Okay. Yeah, that's the last part, John. Okay. Well, the, we can. The, this, I would like this, to go to some of the, the charts this one. morning if we can go live into the market. Let me see. Okay. Yeah, just put that up. That's awesome. Okay. Um, nope. Not necessarily. I'm gonna, I just really kind of want to give you everybody want me to pull a, up one uh, in particular? how this whole chop thing kind of messes you up. Okay. And, I, you know, just because this is the stuff that, you know, the whole news, the whole, man, the problems. Okay. It's one thing to be able to take good trades. It's another thing to try to avoid bad trades or not, not so much bad trades, but, hey, how do I manage it when, you know, dang it, I'm just getting in at the wrong spot. Yeah. Well, now Gloria C is too small on her. Now, Gloria, um, you can Gloria just to let you know. If you look up above, you'll find there are uh, some buttons above the window. You got four arrows that point to each other that sizes it down to fit your monitor, and then you have four arrows that point away from each other. You can click on that and widen it up if you need to do that as well. But if uh, John, if sure, you want to open you, up one particular chart, can you open up, say, the pound yen, um, and, and then give me, uh, you know, just let me know which chart. session too. Can you get or give me a look back on a couple sessions? Okay. Yeah, that that no, that's yeah, that that's fine right there. That's fine right there. Is that it? Um, there's the pound here's, yen. Here's something else to talk about, and kind of what I want get to about this and I, ass okay. I assume I don't I lost my pointer do I still have a pointer Dean
I'll see if I can take control. Can you all see my my air my mouse right there? I believe you can, right? Okay, good. So here's news. Here, non-farm payroll. Goodness gracious. What are we doing? We're waiting for this thing to kind of settle out. When you get news, my recommendation, and my broker, I told you my broker almost forces me to do this, is wait one to two candles. And trust me on this one, this mess here, trying to do, trying to make these trades is almost impossible unless you've got a real good broker who likes to fill you where you want to get filled. More often than not, with my broker is he slips me 30 or 40 pips. It's not even worth my time. So, but look at what's look what's happening here. Which way are we trading? We're trading bottom left to top right. Okay. So I the news happens. Big spike up big spike down. So here's where if the news starts in this area, I'm waiting two candles. This candle, this candle. And you can see here, we pin down to the bottom. Now, you can wait a, another candle or two. Let's just say we come up here and I'm looking, oh, it come up to the buy stop level, the open line, and, I, and, I'm, and you're wrong. And you want to short it right here. Where's your stop? Just right above in this area here, you know. Even I, if the trade, listen. If you've got a spot on the charts, and this non-farm payroll is a great example. If you've got more than 15 or 20 pips that you have to put in as a um, as a stop, then you're probably not in the right spot for your entry. And you can see that if you waited here. You, you were wrong, and here's again. Sometimes it's difficult when you get this oscillation. If, you're, if, you, if you sold it here, your stop's here, you have to take the next trade. You have to take the next long. And you can see here where Dean and Sonny, the long, the guppies, help you. You can see where they're holding right in this area, and you can see that this whole whipsaw really doesn't matter as much as this upward movement. And you can see this turns into a huge J-hook. Sit on your hands. Sit on your hands. Let this thing play out. You can already see that, boy, even if you know, you're a little late to the trade, and here's, here's my example. Here's what I kind of started at the beginning of all, the, all uh, what I was saying earlier. How do I know when to make these trades? And you can know, hey, all night during the non-farm payroll, the odds of me getting a 30 to 60 pip movement that I can actually trade or 100 pip movement where they run their ADRs is much less than after non-farm payroll. It happened the same thing yesterday morning, and I don't even remember the darn news event. But it was basically the same thing, not quite as much volatility, but the same kind of look. You can, um, so that's, that's kind of where I'm coming from there. If you get whipsawed out of these things, don't be afraid to take the next trade. Okay, so let's see where are we going. How about any questions, you guys? And okay, folks, here's again, you know, I talked about this whole diagonal thing, these points on the charts, and I apologize because I've never taken control of Dean's charts, but you can see if you draw a diagonal line, and I just eyeball this where you need to be taking your profits. Then there's, that's, that's machines, you guys, ladies. That's machines. That's all it is. And you can see that that's an area that you're going to run into resistance. And I'm sure if you draw a horizontal line, it correlates with something back here. But on the shorter time frames, I can see these angles a lot clearer. And you can see where this down here, we talked about Dean's levels. I'm sure this probably lines up with, you know, the weekly supporter resistance down in this area. Avoid this. Avoid that stuff early in the thing. Which way is this thing trading? It's trading from bottom left, top right. If you can just take some real basics of where price is likely to go, you're going to put yourself in a better position to catch better J hooks and find you know the better spots to trade. And this is a this is a mess. That's a total mess. 
And there's a lot, of, also, I mentioned two candles. A lot of times, the market after a big news event, it'll be 45 minutes to an hour and a half before it really starts to get going again. Let's go to a different chart, Dean. How about the pound dollar? That's probably a, one of the better trades overnight. And by the way, y'all, I'm wanting this Aussie dollar to drop a little bit more here because I, I took some off and I added some more short. But, you know, it's Friday. Now, let me tell everybody this. So when we talked about best times to trade, is this the best time to start taking trades on a Friday at 10 o'clock in the morning? Not even. And that's 10 o'clock, uh, that's 12 o'clock Eastern time. Heck no. If you can come in, if you want to do yourself the biggest favor, and a good point is that Aussie session last night, so often in the Aussie session, you'll get the 20 to 40 to 60 pit move, and that thing will either base sideways or it'll roll back over and come right back where it started from. Two moves, you're done trading. You put some pips in your pocket, stop trading. You come into Europe, same thing. You're looking for the initial fake move, and it might give you another 20 to 30 pip move up, a couple hours in, or an hour to two to three into the market. They'll shift it and try to trap everybody at the top like they did on the guppy up here. Everybody can see this on the charts. We're trapping, folks. Price likely to come all the way back, but you can see where you got to be out of the trade up here. If you took this J hook right here, pull back and you got in, don't let it go negative. Do not let this go negative. Do you want to sit through this? I don't. If I'm sitting in this in a losing position, that's that's not the trade I want to be in. It's taking my time, my money, and my brain power. Okay, is this a five-minute chart? Uh, good, and you can see kind of the, this whole action is a, a little easier to see on a five. But as a trader, you have to make decisions, and if you took this J-hook, your stop was right in here. At worst, it was at the 15. You get up, do not let it go negative. And here's another thing. Everybody asks, me, hey, what pairs do you trade? <laughs> trade one pair. Trade two pair. Your goal is not to mess up. Your goal, and if that takes just trading one pair or two pairs, then that's what you want to do. Uh, Dean, can you pull up the pound dollar? I'm looking at my other charts. Let me see here. I might have lost Dean. Dean might, you know, Dean's got a, uh-oh. Dean's got a big plate full of things to take care of. So, you guys, do you have some questions on this stuff? I feel like I'm kind of rambling a little bit. Yes, sir? Yeah. Hey, John. I'm I just sorry, thought buddy. we'd go to the pound yeah, I'm talking about chart. program at the same time you're doing this. So, excuse me, what did you need me to do? Yeah, oh, sorry. Let me see if I can... Okay. Yes. Uh, let Can go I of the mouse. Take control. <laughs> okay. There. Go ahead. Since we both. Okay. No. I, I mean, if you just let go of your mouse, I'll take back over. Now I don't know what you did here. Oh, I'll close this guy. Ah. Uh, then go to the pound. There you go. Yeah. Okay, I, what I really need me to see is the Euro bit. session and Asian session opens on there. I I I yeah, almost do this uh, um, I have a here. set of charts oh, where I, I have, the ADR I'm off. looking back three or four sessions. Uh, and I mentioned the other day where I actually leave a you guys and you all don't have to do all this extra stuff. I just find it helps me a little bit that I like to know where the Aussie session was at because I like to know where we started. Excuse me, y'all. Can we? Okay, so you want me to show all three? Yeah, hold on just a moment. Let me let me work on this. Um, okay, give me just a sec. Okay, there's New York. Hold on just a moment. Uh, the pound, I'll put on this guy. Okay, and then... Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, let me see here. Um, indicator list. 
Oops. Go false. Okay. Close. There's a European and then one more. And I'll get this one set for the Asian session. Actually, I'll leave that one the same, and I'll move this one to the I'll Asian make it session. Work. So you got it, Asian, Europe. I'll make it work. Will that work for you, John? Okay, so okay, okay. So here's what you got, John. You've got. Uh, let me put that. That's on 15. Let me take that back. And What's so like you've got. Here's Asia. Here's Europe. And then here's New York. Let me kind of position these so you can. And then if you need to, uh, hold on a sec. Why did that? Oh, that's I, that didn't update. Hold on. True, true, true. Oh, I, I forgot to take this one off. False. Okay. Bingo. Nope, that's fine, Dean. You can leave them all right like that. Thirty minute on this one, um, so you can. And this really goes back. There you go. Go you, ahead. There, Okay, right. thank you, sir. You, this goes back to you've got it, buddy. Dots 101, Dots Guppy 101. Oh, well, let me uh, take control here so like you guys can see. This goes back to Dots 101. Okay, so here we are at the open. What are we doing here? We're basing between this buy stop, or the buy stop level and the sell stop level. Where's our bias? Are we trading below or above the long-term guppies? This is really nice. This should have told you right here. That hey, I know I can see visually I'm above the guppies. Okay, so I'm watching this. I see this pin at the open of the session. Even if you took this trade, you think it's going to break down. Where your stop is right here again. So my point being is there's going to be times where you're gonna the trade is going to fail. But don't be afraid to take the trade now. Was this the best setup? No. And if you follow Dean's and, and Sonny's rules, you're looking for the long. So I'm waiting in the session. I see this pin. It stopped me out. And I'm out of the trade. I'm waiting here. What do you all see here? What have, what have we talked about earlier about these big pins? They usually denote the tops and the bottom of the immediate range. This is fractals. These are fractal points where you're getting into the bottom. Look at this. You see the angle? Look at this. You see the angle? This is machines. I almost guarantee this is probably 618 retracements from here to here, probably from here to here. But these are these are points that you can see where you need to be in and out of trades. And look at this. Great setup. I goof up. I short it. I don't really get the trade. I know, and I look and I say, oh, darn it, John. Why did I do that? Man, I'm, I should be trading long. The guppies are telling me to trade long. So you're waiting here. This is a breakout. You can see the sell stop level is actually re, re, um, resistance, and it's a breakout level. You take the trade. You're long. You're looking to bank profits here, and you certainly, if you're holding part of it, you're looking to get out up in this area because of the that angle and the things that we know. Look, previous high the day before, it's all coming into play. So you, you took early in Asia. You take this, and again, this is what I'm talking about. First good move. Second good move, right where we came from, chop, 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 chop. Okay, second chart. We come into the euro. Don't get caught up in the, uh, and you might have missed all this stuff. And I, this, and being that I'm looking at it the way I am, it's a little convoluted to me. I'm not really sure time frame wise. And if this is the euro session, it's the same setup again. Let me see if I can get it here. Look at this, I talked about earlier, this angle. All right. Which way are the guppies telling me to trade? Have the short terms broke down below the long terms? No, they keep testing it, don't they? So even if you took this trade here and you got short, and I believe this is the same area in Asia, I think this is all the same point in the charts because I think this is the day open. So, But anyways, to, to not digress, the same kind of look we're looking for. This is the angle. Which way is price going? Which way are the guppies going? This will make your trades easier, and you'll catch the better pairs. Look for pairs that look like this versus just this whole braided action, and you can't really see any here on this chart. Hold on, let me move this down. I don't know if you can see that or not. Oh, let's move that over there. 
Um, again, so where are we at? Most of the action's above the open line. We're going this way. We're taking this trade. And you can see here there's really no break below the 15. And if you want to make your trades really run, you can run your stops right below this 15 here. That's the best way to really maximize your trades. Remember what I was telling you all about, hey, my real goal is to catch this, not just to get to here. That's my real goal. Think about it this way, y'all. How often, and it happens on every pair every day, it's just a matter of when, that they're going to run 50 to 100% of their ADR. And sometimes they're going to go to 20%, 30% higher than their ADR. I don't know when it's going to happen, but I know sometime during the day that's the run I'm going to get. And it can be above or below. Now here's the rationale for this. I know it's going to happen. They all do it, and they all do it sometime during the day. And that is the best possible trade you can get. You can try to short this and come down to here. You can try to short this and you can try to short this. But the best possible trade is trading away from the open, trying to catch the ADR move. You're going to have to fight your way through this stuff. But again, if you kind of pick your spots, know that it's going to happen. And I'll tell you all something else. If these things wind up and they're in a 20 to 30 pip range and you haven't made this move yet, it's going to come. And actually, in some instances, the more the chop, the better the chance you're going to get the bigger move. The longer the chop, the longer the next move. And if, if you're sitting here and you're two hours in and, oh, it's just chopping, it's just chopping, it's just chopping, smack yourself. Because you need to wake up because pretty soon it's going to break out. And you can almost almost always correlate it to about an hour or two, a new market opening, or an hour or two into the market. It just happens over and over and over again. And if you got big news like non-farm payroll, don't be trading the euro session. You're, or don't, or if you do trade it, when you get up five or six pips, do not let it go negative if you've got 10 or 12 pip stops. Protect the bottom line. Let's see, and you can, this pound pair was a sweet pair to trade. Um, and you can see where diagonal support and resistance hold. Let me open the chat back up here at the bottom because I might be missing some of your uh, questions. Uh, how do you filter your select pairs to trade for the session? Step away from the mouse, absolutely, Janet. Sometimes that's the hardest thing in the world. And, and Michael, I do enter off the five-minute chart. And I am looking at the five-minute chart, and I'm looking for Dean's dots levels to hold along with the moving averages. How do I filter my trades? You know, one way that I do it is I, you know, when Dean has all his charts up, you can kind of see, and really, here's how you filter it again. In Asia, what pairs you're going to be looking at? Aussie pairs, Kiwi pairs, yen pairs. Now, if you see the pound Aussie cruising, and if you see the pound yen cruising, and their their they're bias is up, and you can see that the strength is stronger in the pound pairs. Well, then you can look at the pound pairs. Does the pound dollar really go in the U.S. or the Aussie session? Hardly ever. Hardly ever. But you can kind of see where you can start. And y'all, Dean's coming up with a, a, a real good um, market indicator that will not only give you a bias in, in just uh, one, in one uh, currency, but really the best bias of that currency towards all the other currencies. And that's something that really nobody else has out there. And I, and I know he's working on it. And I know that all this crud with the whole MT4 updates have probably slowed that process down, but he was kind of mentioned when they get this dots, the next upgrade, that that's going to be part of it. Y'all, that'll really just kind of take it to the next level. Um, it really does, but when Dean's got all his charts up, you can see that you can almost, hey, here's another easy way. If the guppies are cruising straight up, them are the pairs you want to be trading versus the ones that are going sideways. 
Um, and you can see up here on these the pound pairs, and I believe these are all live charts, there, we're really up where you got to, you're done trading. You got to be done trading. You're really looking for each session when you come in to get those one or two good moves, and then you take you stop trading. If you're looking at a 15-minute chart, and especially during like these non-farm payrolls, it's very difficult to find J-hooks when pairs are cruising on a 15. That's when you come down to the 5 to manage your trade. And when they're really cruising, sometimes even the 5 can be difficult. The problem with the one-minute chart on MT4 is it just Googles up my computer and it doesn't work very well. Um, so that's kind of how I approach every session. And you can almost count on that you're going to get some kind of oscillation between the buy and the sell level and the sell stop level and the buy stop level. Look for that to happen. Protect yourself at all costs. And ideally what you're trying to do is catch these pairs running their ADR. Questions? Comments? Concerns? Complaints? Anyone? Buford? Buford? Mueller? <laughs> oh, goodness. You know, and guys and gals, also, again, some of this stuff is, it happens over and over again. And your, your job is really to say, hey, how do I figure out within myself to make this work for me? And... Again, you can kind of try to use whether it be chart patterns, the guppies, just the buy sell levels himself, and and wait. Don't feel like you're missing stuff. You've got tons of Dean's all his charts up. You can see all the pairs. Um, well, good, Tom. I'm reading Tom's questions there. You're gonna, folks, and that I, I think that comes back to the beginning why that I'm trying to pick a point on the chart that I can get the best risk reward. And the reason for that is because I don't have the uh, magic ball. I don't really know what's going to happen next. But I do know that I can increase the odds in my favor. And I do know that when I come into these sessions that there are certain things I can look for. You know, test of the open, the angle, the guppies, pin bars, you know, rejected from the buyer or the seller early in the session, news events that I have to watch. Um, those things all take, I have to consider. But you can see, folks, that the closer you are to the open, the better your chance of when you take a trade, the less you have to risk, the better your, your chance of making more than you're risking. And don't worry. If you miss the sell stop level, you can see where, and I'm looking at the middle chart right there, Dean. Look at what happened here. Oh, let me see if I can get my mouse over here. Look what happened here yesterday's, and I take it previous high. That was yesterday's previous high. But why did it fail here and not go versus here? Too early in the session. Too early in the session. And um, if this is all last night, this is all non-farm payroll kind of stuff. But again, let me see if I can just click on that chart. You can see, you guys, that if you got in here and you know it's early in the session, you see this, you're taking your trade off. Even if you got down here and you 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 basically sold here, you know, the guppies are against you. When the guppies are against you, have tighter stops. You see three pins. Don't be waiting for this thing to go lower. Now, what do you look? What look? What happened here? We pin, we pin. We actually, we we retested the buy stop level. And if you see this kind of stuff, you know you don't have to take the trade right here. But if you see it busting back through the open and the buy stop level held here, basically held here, and we retested it, what are we doing? We're you know we're doing a basically this whole six one eight. And there's other people, there's a lot of people that trade this and it's maybe it was a 786. But you don't need that stuff because the Dean's levels. Which way is the guppies telling you to go? You can wait. Here we go again. One, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight-ish area. You're waiting on this stuff. What are we doing in this area here? We're chopping between the buy and the sell, really. So again, just kind of recap it a little bit. If you take the trade from the sell stop level and you get up some, do not let it go negative. Because what we're really trying to get is this. We're, and we know that the market's going to try to do this more often than not before you get this. And when you have news events, this whole stuff happens much more than the breakaway from the beginning of the session. And that happens almost all the time. And I take it this is the U.S. session over here on the right. So you can see how, and this is a little convoluted, so I, I'm not sure if, these, these, if I'm really reading these charts right, you guys. But again, Dean and Sonny and myself included, which way is the biased? Are the guppies short terms above or below the long terms? That's another way to tell you what pairs to pick. Yeah, tightening of the spring, rubber, uh, winding up the rubber band on your little toy airplane, you know those old ones where you spun the propeller, wound up the rubber band and let it go. The more consolidation you get, the bigger the next move. And you guys, you can go out to the 60s and 240s and, and do some uh, top-down analysis. And then by no means does, does this say, hey, I can only stare at a 15-minute chart. But, you know, again, just try to keep your odds in, in your best favor. And when you have news events, you're going to get more chop and oscillation. But, again, does everybody agree that sometime during the day you're going to get a 50 or you're going to get a 50% to 100% move of the ADR away from the open? You don't know which, which way you're going to go. Sometimes they'll run all the way up to the ADR high and then run all the way back down to the ADR low. You don't know what's going to happen. All you can do is have a plan, try to implement it. So you know, maximum size pips. You know what? I do. The, the tighter it can be, and there's a, a pip stop uh, or a stop loss, the tighter it can be, the better off I am. It really is. Maximum, probably about 20 pips. And I don't want to go to 20 pips. I really, really don't. I my what I like the best is I like to try the pre, trade the previous candle, the previous 15-minute candle. That's what I really prefer to have my stop at because I like to pinpoint on the chart where I'm right or wrong. But again, if you've got a little pin swing, they are really the best place on the chart. The previous swing high or swing low is the best place. And that's where you're least likely to, that is the least likely spot to get stopped out and the most likely spot to tell you you're wrong. I like to use the previous candle if I can. And, I, and if it's got a long wick on it, it's even better. Um, yes, yes, sir? Hey, John, the other day. Uh, John? Yeah, the other day I I put my stop right below the pin th that you're talking about, and um, wow. it came within point oh 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 seven of hitting the bottom of that pin. And I was about a pip below that, and you're right. Uh, they respected that that pin low within Indeed. almost within the pip, and then it just worked its way right back up. At, then so there's a lot of validity. Mean that is the safest uh, your stop spot below that pin for you candle. not to get shaked out of the trade. It is by far the safest spot. Sometimes though, it can make your stop a little farther down. But you know that's a that's a call that most traders have to make for themselves. But that Dean, you're absolutely right, and that was the perfect spot to put your. And Dean, let me ask you this: Do you think the reason for that is that they? They pinned away from that, and obviously there's money down below that area that they don't want to let go, and there's traders that they've got stuck down there. I mean, it's got to be something along that line, wouldn't you say? I'm... You know, it, it, it could be that. Um, sometimes I think it's 
the, the stop hunt. It's just a just enough of a push, 20, 25 pips or so in the opposite direction to to do that. Or they might still have some contracts down there that they want to collect. Remember when yes, I was sir. talking about, I, I don't know if you yeah, were in the room when I talked about the depth of market? Do you recall that, John? So there may be like an... Uh, um, Oh wait a sec. Where's my there's my cursor. Uh, I'm trying to find an example here. Maybe a, I don't know if I can. So oh, that one pinned down because of news and stuff. But um, see they. Uh, I'm trying to find one here. Mm, let me see what that's at. Uh, that's at 63.10. They may be trying to so reach out sometimes really and just. Dean is a contract the, or something. What you're almost saying there, is the big players then pull got their up. orders down here at the best entry points, huh? and they spike down to fill themselves. Exactly. Exactly, because and this is this is probably a pretty good example. You got these highs right here. It pushes off, and you know if we were to take the guppies away, if you didn't see the guppies here, you got this push away. You broke a high. You're going long now, right there. Y'all see that? If I if I took the let me see here. If I just delete some of these off, hopefully you can see what I'm talking about here, because we're just now talking about price action here. Okay, delete that. So let me delete these off so you can see this. So you got a um, you got this little swing low right here, and you got a close, a close. And then uh, or low, low and low with a pin low. So that's called a swing low right there. And then the market sees or the traders are seeing that okay, we just broke that area right there. You see that 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 previous open right there and that low. We've broken it, so boom, we're in it. We're going long. Well, now that's fine and dandy, but we're not getting any energy now. Not getting any energy, market pulls back a little bit, collects more contracts, come back up, and then look what happens. On down, trying to make it work again. You're still holding your trade that you did up here, and then the market continues to push down and look the distance they go. You go almost 20 pip distance to go collect, uh, and you're probably right there, John, a better price point. And oftentimes, these little quick pin downs like that, it's, we'll throw another 10 million in to push down there and grab that better price Dean, point it's a, it's, and then catch the bounce back up. Absolutely, makes sense to me. This kind of action that you're seeing right there, that make that's any sense? almost a, a, a dead giveaway that they're going to pin it the other way. It, it really is. I mean, this up here, this here, you know, they're, they're, they're scammers out there in the market. They, they really got it down to a science on how to put pressure on the retail traders. And your job as a retail trader, go ahead, I'm sorry, Dean, that's the old delay. I, what do you, what, what do you click on that keeps pop up? I know, I'm sorry. Okay, it's all yours, Dean. Oh, wait. <laughs> All right, I, I'm just saying that you, you, something's going on because my little pop-up keeps coming up. Uh, I, I have to answer not, one question but, for uh, John that he had up here a little higher. Let me go back do we have any more questions? Let's see, question above. John, do you have a maximum piss off? Uh, do you see any? Hey, John, it looks like the question is, do you see any potential false long moves in the chart be period before the big move up or the big move up or down? Yes, all the time. And you know what? Just as these pins we were showing. This is the kind of action that they'll do. They'll spike it up and they'll pin away from it. And this kind of comes back to what we were mentioning earlier, that if you're earlier in the session, the one thing that you want to do more than anything is not get trapped at the high of the candle. And if you start to see the move, you can come down here. Uh, basically, you know, you're just, and I'm right here. Oh, let me go back and take control of the chart so I can point out an example. Right here in the middle. All right, then John's question is, do you often see potential false long moves or short moves before you get the really big move? Sure. Here's one right here. Here's one right here. And that's exactly what they're doing. 
boom, boom. They're trying to get you. They're, they're trying to create a market, trying to get people here, trying to get people down here. Where are the guppies? All right. So I got it. As a trader, you have to have a filter that tells you, hey, I want to be this side or this side. Now, again, John, this is kind of what I talked about earlier. If I'm buying here, am I in the session? Because, folks, you don't know if it's going to start here at the beginning or start here later. All you can do is have the same entry and exit rules. So you buy at the sell stop level, you're taking some off up here. Early in the session, put some money in your pocket. And, and if you don't want to trade this, sit on your hands. Wait for the five to six bars in before you start to look at it. If you're also in this whole non-farm payroll stuff, you know, and there are crazy markets, just wait. Wait. And all you can do is have your rules written down, know how to trade them, and then trade them. But heck yeah, you're going to see lots of false moves. And some of them can be big, and some of them can give you 30 or 40 or 50 pips. Sorry, guys. I'm gonna, so I can see the rest of the charts. Does that answer that one, John? You're all, man, there's nothing easy about this, you guys. And I want to convey to you, though, it's not easy, but with some simple rules and a plan that you can manage. And I, guys, sorry, I'm clicking all over Dean's charts and the the point really is what are you doing and how are you implementing it you don't have to take counter trend trades you're gonna feel like you're missing some you know you might look at these trades and say here man I just looked at the pound dollar and the pound pairs and they're all they're all tr the day charts hooking up off the bottom it's doing a day uh, a J hook off the bottom or the 240 chart is is going from bottom left to top right or wait and do I really want to be short in the pound pairs probably not you have to have some other indicators and simplify it down to say and Dean we were talking about me and Dean were talking earlier about this the advantages that the guppies give you is y'all the bigger move is above the guppies it's always going to be above the guppies or below the guppies depending on which angle they're going you're always going to get your bigger move and your higher probability of going to the ADR above the guppies if they're pointed up and below them if they're going down now some of this stuff's just kind of common sense but it's easy when you're looking at so many different things to kind of just mess it up a little bit but write yourself down and your trade plan only really needs to be about three to six rules it doesn't need to be much more than that. But the, the real trick is, hey, can I do the same thing over and over again? And right here on this pair, you know, pin down, pin down. The guppies are telling me long. Retest it. doesn't retest the open. But boy, oh boy, somewhere in this area here, when you see that pin pulling away from the sell stop level, which way the guppies pointed? You can see that one. I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm not making it up. Same thing here. You know, we're getting the angle, we're testing it here, and it doesn't matter when I kind of explained it earlier. If I'm buying it here and I'm here, I'm protecting it. I'm not going negative and riding this out. And if I'm not sure, don't take it to trade. Don't take the trade. Sometimes it's better not to trade than it is to take the trade. All, only you can control your bottom line. And it's, and it's really easy to get pressured in all your trades. But again, folks, you know, what we're trying to do is catch the bigger part. We're managing our trade in this area. And you can almost, almost look at it, come into the Aussie session. I'm looking for my one, two good move. And it's the old bouncing ball theory. You know, the higher the ball bounces, the bigger the next, you know, the next move kind of thing. You know, you cruise up, you come back down, and you're just trying to catch the, all the humps. And some of this stuff is just, like I mentioned earlier, and I'm not going to try to complicate things. This is just swing high, swing low, swing high, swing low. We're really coming into a pennant. The break of the pennant, off we go. Can you all see that? And I'm not drawing the lines, but you can see diagonal down, diagonal up, 
and you guys can do this. And that's another good trick in the uh, uh, every session you come into. Just take the buy sell levels, draw yourself trend lines across the top and the bottom. And then use your dots levels to tell you how to trade it. And by drawing those, because the horizontal lines are already drawn in for you, the diagonal ones aren't. But can everybody see that pennant I'm kind of going, I'm drawing here? Diagonal this way, diagonal this way. Do you have to be the first one in the trade? Heck no. Has the ADR really moved yet here? No. Do we know it's going to go sometime or another? Heck yeah. The more it winds up, the better chance you've got your trade to be right. And I hope you guys can see what I'm talking about there. Happened right here. You can see it here. You can come into the session, and you're watching beforehand here. This is already telling you. I know early in the session to test the levels. Which way is my bias? Which way is the short terms? Pinching down. Wait. You see this thing. Well, I mean, that's a beauty. All right, you guys. I hope uh, everybody's kind of getting the gist of it. The toughest part is, you know, hey, and, you, and nobody can tell you when it's going to break out, when it's going to make its good move. You can kind of anticipate that if you haven't made the move yet, that it's going to come here sooner than later. And if it hasn't moved, you usually can say, a lot of times, an hour, hour and a half into the market. You can kind of look over here, and if you're watching the equity markets, and you know, remember too, European markets have an effect on currencies. The Dow has an effect on currencies. The S&P has an effect on it. Everything kind of correlates, and you can, and so use whatever indicators you need. Try to keep it as simple as possible. Take advantage of the guppy moving averages. Take advantage of the and the dots levels. Protect yourself whenever you can early in the sessions when you're in the chop periods like this. Look to put money in your pocket. Do your best not to sit in a negative trade. And if you can do that, you're going to maximize your rewards and minimize your risk. It'd be great if me and Dean can come in here and say, absolutely this, then this. You No doubt about it, 100% this, then this just can't happen y'all but you can see how you can put the odds in your favor and it trading is probabilities you've heard Dean talk about that and just like the casino you're not the guy walking into the casino your job is to be the casino the casino doesn't win every trade it lets those people that come walking in win you know 80 85 percent on the slot machines it lets them win lots of different things. But they know that because of probabilities, the long run, they're going to make big bucks, build huge casinos, pay out to their, you know, here in Arizona, give quarterly checks to every single person in the tribe. And the why? Because they're not the retail trader. They're the house. And that's what your goal is as a trader is to be the house not the not the the guy coming in off the street trying to get you know win at the slot machines or a blackjack table or anywhere else you want to be the casino not the guy coming in questions Anthony, looks Tom's comments about doubling up. You know, those are all these little nuances. As you, as a trader, have to make some of your own decisions. And you know, again, I, we can't say, and Dean can't, and I can't, and I don't know anybody else can say, hey, hundred percent this than that. And it really comes to you have to make some choices, um, draw some lines, try to implement what we've been talking about. As far as the market likes to go back and forth, trigger your trigger, yeah, and you know, 
whipsaw these people. And then, and I had mentioned last week, I think it was, or maybe earlier this week, about, oh, the market likes to reverse at this period kind of thing. You just have to be able to simplify your trade plan as much as possible and trade it. And like I just mentioned about the casino, stack the probabilities in your side. Theoretically, could you make every one of your trades double every every one of your stops a double? Yeah, you know what I mean. So I get stopped out with one, and I'm get two or three, and I'm going the other way with it. That's one technique. I don't do that as a general rule, because really, what folks I'm trying to do is simplify it as much as possible. <clears throat> and one of the reasons for that is. I know sometime during the day we're going to get some kind of push and I want to be here and try to get get that push and I know that they're going to do their best to make it make it as hard as possible on me to hang around to get whipsawed and miss the good move but you know what I know that going in and so I trade accordingly and if you have big news events the harder it is to get a sustained move before the big event. Any other questions? Did I miss any or anything like that, you guys? Ladies? Breakdown. And, and I, I see Michael just wrote that. I see why he's having a problem with this. It's too simple. Well, yeah, Michael, and, and part of the problem at the beginning is is this oscillation. You know, it's very difficult on the 15-minute chart to pick the bottom of the J-hook. So, and just for the simple reason, because price can move 5, 8, 10 pips um, away from you. And, and very quickly, and when you're getting this chop zone in here, you know, 5, 8, 10 pips, can really shake you out in a candle like this kind of thing. You know, this whole area here can really start messing with you. Um, so, you know, you again, as a trader, you have to kind of pick where your stop's going to be. And, you know, gosh, way down here is not probably the best thing. But if this is, and I don't have, I can't see if this is non-farm payroll, but if this is leading up to non-farm payroll here, you have to anticipate you're going to, they're going to try to shake you out of the trade. Remember what's happening. There's some people trying to pre-position into the market, and there's some people trying to shake them right back out the other way. So, you know, anytime you have a big news event, the most ideal setup is no news, and you get the basic, you know, basic trade pattern setting up, where if you've got this kind of thing, and it just fails, and it just keeps going. News kind of, news kind of messes things up. It just does. It's going to mess you up and make things more difficult. My caveat on news, wait wait a little while. Try not to be the first you know, mouse in the trap. And you're probably going to be much better off. And again, I'll tell you what, folks. If you've got news, hey, you want to be the casino? Draw your trend lines. Bracket it. And Dean mentioned last night, I believe, in the Aussie session, or he was trading Aussie news, and he was going to have some orders bracketed. You don't have to do that. But you can see here, if you didn't get in down here, you missed all that, you got this pig pin bar here, and you can see this This, this is probably the news right here, this whole thing right here, these two first 15-minute bars. You wait, Give yourself, wait 30 minutes. You know, you don't have to be the first, you know, first mouse. You can see here where this thing was just, whoo, crazy action. This holding right here, this going on. You know, if you got in, it's just going to shake you out. Do your best not to be in the middle, you know, first 15, 30 minutes of news trades. You're going to miss some, absolutely. But you know what? If you're in news and you're in the wrong spot, you're looking at 40 or 50 pip loser in a heartbeat. Okay. So I'll once again ask, did I miss any questions? Did I kind of um, cover everything pretty much? And, and uh, remember, y'all, they're going to do everything possible to take your money. That's the market's job. And you, what your goal is, 
is to try to get some set of rules that you make it hard for them to take your money. So let me see what I've got going here. Okay. So that's kind of that, y'all. Um, I got other people texting or Skyping me saying the day is done. <laughs> and I totally agree. You know, sometimes you just, you know, that two-hour period where you can get your two good moves, bail. Do yourself a favor, you guys. Try to come in. If you miss, you know, if you can trade the Aussie or the Asia session, the Euro session, the U.S. session, Pick your points in the market where you're going to kind of come and look at things. The worst thing you can do is sit here for three hours during chop. It wears you out, and when the move comes, you're just kind of worn out, and you're really not ready to take that trade. So if you're leading up three or four hours before non-farm payroll, don't, don't, don't get in the market. You know, many traders will just skip the whole euro session. You know, try to, try to use some common sense. And I mentioned my buddy who's trading last night, and he's like, I got whipped out 10 for 10 pip loss or 12 pip loss. And again, my question was, why are you trading before non-farm payroll? You know, and the, the trade changes a little bit when you're in the channel. And, the, and it's a little more difficult to pick the bottom and pick the top for your trade. Use those pin bars. Use all the things we talked about. Use retest. The, the best trades you can take is closest to the open line as you can get. The even better ones are when you get a break away from it and a retest of it. And I'm looking at this pound dollar here, right here on this chart. A retest of the sell level, and the guppies are all going doing this. You've, you've got to be looking at taking this trade whenever you know, to the long side. Whenever you come up and you, you come back down and test Dean's dots levels, it's amazing how often they hold. And if you use the pins, the guppies, the candle formations you know, you can maximize your chance for a, a winning trade. It's all you can do. You could be totally wrong right here. You don't know. But all you can do is find the best setup, how we want to trade the dots, guppies, and the J-hook, and do it. And when, you know, I know Dean shorted that dollar yen, and that wasn't the trade, but this is the look he was looking to sell. That was the look on the charts where the angle, you could see where all, and is there a reason why all those corporate or offers are up there? Yeah, because they're looking at the chart and they can see the angle too. They can see this, where it's going to come in. And I'll tell you what, this is a move that's just going to kill the shorts. Just going to kill you. And I bet if you kind of scrolled back, this area down here was probably on an angle at a third touch. But goodness gracious, even if you sold here and it comes up against you, you got to be out of the trade. And you can't be afraid. And here's another good example. If you're trading and the, the moving averages look like this and you're shortened and they're against you, tight stop. You're trading with them, you can have your stop a little deeper. That's a good caveat. If you're trading with the guppies and somebody asks me that, well, you know, what's your maximum stop loss? My stop loss, if I was going long, would I would be willing to take a bigger one than if I was shorting there right here. Guppies already proved that they're holding. And I'm saying, oh, they're going to roll, they're going to roll. Well, as soon as I see it pull back against me, I'm, uh, and I bet you if you look at this and on a higher time frame, it's telling you which way to trade it. Okay, so I think that's I kind of starting to repeat things again. So I'm going to leave it at that. Any other questions, guys, keep asking. Keep trying to make this work for you. It really is powerful. It's super powerful. Again, when you come before the news, anticipate this kind of consolidation between the buy and the sell in even tighter. If, it, if you can see it just consolidating between the sell stop and the buy stop level, just wait for it to break. And all you can do is minimize your risk and maximize your reward. Whew. Okay, that's about all that, guys, ladies. Dean, back at you. Right. Ah, <laughs>
the, the, cl the golf clap. Nice, the courtesy clap. <laughs> uh, courtesy clap. <laughs> <laughs> I think you appreciate that. <laughs> Not job, job. I, uh, dude, you just took it ran with it, oh. so I wasn't going to jump in and oh, mess well, I you just up. Trying you, to kind of... wasn't going to mess with your mojo, dude. You had it going. Now let go. I was just trying to let people know what I'm looking at <laughs> and what I'm feeling when I come into the market. Do what? Okay. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. And uh, I hope everyone who's listening in this um, in this training, and if you're listening to the recording, do you get a sense that John's been at this a while? Do you get a sense that John's had the ups and the downs? Do you get a sense that he's, you know, put in the time, the elbow grease, the the frustration, the hair pulling, the, you know, head against the wall? Why is this not doing this? Have you not gotten a sense of that? I mean, John said it perfectly when he said there's no exact answer to that. It's It's based upon you. One of the things I learned a long time ago, uh, and many of y'all might have been in the same situation, where you go to the, one of these training seminars, and the guy says, this is how you have to do it. This will work if you'll just do it this way every time. And you try to fit yourself to what he's doing. But the question is, are you that type of person? You know, do you drive in the fast lane, or do you drive in the slow lane? Or are you kind of in the middle? You know, do you see the the glass is half empty or do you see the glass is half full? We have to trade, long story short, we have to trade what works for us. And so what John's trying to share with you is what's working for him. The interesting thing is what he's sharing with you is he's made in such a way to where it's workable for anybody. This J-hook pattern, I was just on uh, uh, some emails the, or answering some emails the other night and someone asked me, I can't do this 5 or 15 minute trading. I just can't do it, and and I don't think dots is going to even work for me, and or the J hook thing is not even going to work for me because I trade on the hourly chart. I answered the email, and that very moment I was answering the email had a beautiful J hook pattern on the one hour chart, and I sent the guy a snapshot and said, "Here's the J hook on the on the dollar cat right this moment as I'm answering this email. All you got to do is do A B C, and we had an A B C setup." Already, we were testing the open already at the time of the email that I was answering. And I said, now when it breaks the di diagonal trend line and, s and closes on that side, look for an entry. The guy writes me back and goes, uh, I will study more about this J-hook. <laughs> and it was on the one-hour chart. So I really do appreciate John coming in. Thank you so much, buddy, for, for doing this for everyone. I hope everybody got a lot of good information. Uh, from from John today. We're going to continue to do this type of, uh, of trading. Uh, you may see my charts get a little bit modified uh, to some extent. Uh, I'm looking at some different scenarios that I want to put in place So uh, on, on how I want my charts. I may even change up the colorization a little bit. Uh, this red sticking out at me, um, I've, I've thought about changing the color up a little bit. I'll see. Um, I'll, I'm going to. I'm designing another template. I will tell you what, though, and I, I was just add. Uh, I just, you know, straight out with John is that when I'm trading more and more right now uh, uh, on these pairs, um, I'm not as focused so much now on the uh, short-term guppies as I was. Whoop, John, are you still on the cursor? There we go. Um, I, I'm. I. Um, I'm not so focused so much on the short term as I am on the long term. And for me, uh, just something to think about. You can do whatever you want. But I totally agree with John's point about how the market plays off of the 15 minute. You can see how they ride the 15 minute right along there. And again, we get the news and a lot of back and forth, but then it finally comes right around that 15 and starts working off that 15. Look at it right here. Notice how the market just kind of riding that 15, test it, bounce, 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 and then finally pushes through. See that? 
See how the market pinned down right back at the 15 and took a push back off? Um, if we had, you know, our dots levels back here, might have been a situation where we could have possibly played that. Let me go back a little bit here. Whoops. Five. Let's just see here. Nope, we were already above. But see how it pinned low right there back up? See how right in this area? So I, I'm considering um, how can we get this set up in such a way that the, the J-hook just kind of jumps out at you. Okay. Absolutely, Jimmy. Totally agree with that. All right, folks. Um, we're going to wrap it up. If you got any questions, you can shoot those questions over to me at support at compassfx.com, attention dean. If you have a question for John, uh, send them to me. I will get them to him. Again, I uh, uh, appreciate what he's doing, but at the same time, he trades for a living, so we've taken up some of his time today, and I want to respect his anonymity to some degree. Uh, so that way he can focus in on his trading. With that, folks, y'all have a fantastic weekend. Get away from this silly market. Uh, go enjoy family and friends. Uh, you know, and I'm very serious about that. Uh, this takes so much of our time and so much mental capacity that sometimes you just need a little release, and the best thing to get that release is if you have some family or some friends, you can go out and have a good laugh. You know, laughing and having a good time, uh, you know, really is, uh, and many health professionals su suggest that it really does help your body and restore itself a proper amount of sleep, which a lot of us miss because of the market. Uh, so spend some time with family and friends. Tell someone you love them. Give them a hug, and uh, we will see you all come Monday morning. Y'all take care. God bless. Bye-bye.